Hi folks, today we're gonna to talk about whether or not you should carry a weapon, a handgun, with a round in the chamber. So some people have asked me, should you have a round in the chamber? Should you not have a round in the chamber? My answer is absolutely, you should have a round in the chamber when you conceal carry or openly carry, depending on where you live or, or what your situation is. I'm gonna tell you why, but first we need to talk about a couple of things. Before we get into it, I need you to hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you're notified when we release new updated videos. I have my Glock 19 Generation 5 here to demonstrate. Now this is uh, unloaded, the weapon's clear. I've cleared it already. You can see there's no magazine. The chamber is clear. We are using dummy rounds today. So I have a few of them in the magazine here. You can see that they're the bright uh, fluorescent yellow. These rounds do not fire. They're not real ammunition. Same size, not really the same weight. And of course they don't go bang when you pull the trigger. So when you practice, whether it's dry firing or just practice drawing from your holster, you should always use, either unload your weapon completely, have no ammunition even around you, or use these dummy rounds, you can get them on Amazon. They're very cheap and they're very safe to use. So that's what we're gonna be using today. Just a little background, we know that the weapon, uh, we're talking about a semi-automatic pistol, has to, there has to be a round in the chamber in order for it to fire, right? So we load with the magazine, we let the slide go forward, we know a round loads in the chamber, and this is how the weapon has to be configured in order to fire. So some people say, well, isn't it more dangerous to carry a loaded weapon with a round in the chamber, especially with a Glock, because some people don't understand that Glocks don't only have one safety, they actually have three. Two are internal, one's external. We'll get into that in a minute. So yes, it is more dangerous to carry a firearm with a round in the chamber, but we are talking about guns here. You know, they have the potential for being very dangerous if they're not handled properly. There are four basic firearm rules of safety. We're gonna cover a couple of them here. Well, two really in one. Follow these rules, you should be fine with carrying a, a firearm with a round in the chamber. So the first rule, probably the most important, is you treat every firearm as if it were loaded. So that also means always pointing it in the safe direction and your finger is off the trigger until you're ready to fire. So when you draw from a holster or wherever it is, you know, that finger is always pointing straight above the trigger guards. It's along the lower frame here, but it is away from the trigger. As you can see, my finger is nowhere near the trigger. Always pointing it in the safe direction, fingers off the trigger, and I'm assuming it's loaded. I know it's loaded, it's loaded with dummy rounds, but when I carry a gun, I know it's loaded. Have these rules in your head, always treat every firearm as if it were loaded, fingers off the trigger, it's always pointing it in a safe direction. Keep watching because I'm gonna tell you the number one reason why I think you need to carry your weapon with a round in the chamber. It's obviously gonna be your choice. It's whatever you're comfortable with. This is a Glock. As, as I mentioned, there are three safeties on this weapon. Some people don't think a Glock has any safety because they say, oh, you have that little that little lever on the trigger that you have to pull it. Well, that means you, you can still pull the trigger. So some people think a mechanical safety, which will prevent the trigger from being pulled, some weapons have this. So Glocks actually have a what's called a safe action system. It incorporates three automatic safeties to the weapon. One is external and two are internal. So I'm just gonna briefly cover those. You have the external safety, which is an actual lever on the trigger, which means you actually have to pull that lever. That actually has to be pulled in order for the trigger to move rearward. And you hear the, the firing pin, you hear the click there. So some guns have a mechanical safety. It's, a, it's an actual lever that you uh, uh, slide or click on or click off. With those weapons, you know, when that safety's on, you can't pull the trigger. If you have one of those weapons, I would suggest that when you train at the range or when you dry fire at home or in your backyard or wherever, make sure your weapon's unloaded, of course. When you practice drawing from your holster, make sure you flick off that safety as you're drawing or pretty close to after the weapon comes out. We hope that we never have to use our weapons, but if you have to, if you're in that situation and you go to fire your weapon and the safety's on, you know, that could be trouble. So all I'm saying to you, if you have a mechanical safety, train to disengage that safety as the weapon comes out of your holster. And then the other two safeties are internal. There's a firing pin safety inside internally, and there's a drop safety internally, and they protect the weapon as well. So the Glock actually has three safeties, one external to internal. 
So that may help your decision. You could either have a weapon with a physical safety, a mechanical safety that you have to physically disengage. I'm not a big fan of those, but I have weapons that have them. A physical, at least for my everyday carry, I don't like having a mechanical safety because I don't like having to know that I'm going to have to disengage the safety before I use a weapon. So you have the option of having a weapon, either a Glock that has three safeties, two internal, one external, or you have a you can have a weapon that has a mechanical safety a lever that you actually have to physically disengage in order to use also there's uh, some weapons are double action when you pull the trigger and then they go to single action a double action means it's a longer harder trigger pull so it's it's almost like you know you have to intentionally pull that trigger for that double action to occur so in a sense some people say well that's sort of a safety because you have to deliberately pull that trigger you know it's a it's a longer harder trigger pull for that double action so and whereas that single action it's a it's a very shorter lighter trigger pull to uh, fire the weapon now as far as the number one reason in my opinion for carrying with a round in the chamber is that this weapon or whatever weapon you're carrying needs to be ready to fire when it comes out of the holster in most situations you will not have time to rack that slide and put around in the chamber you know that is a hollywood thing you see that in movies all the time the police are carrying their weapons and right before they go into a room to engage somebody they rack that slide it's all about dramatics with hollywood but in real life if you're in a close quarter situation and somebody pulls out a gun or a knife and you need to draw and fire that weapon you're not going to have time to rack the slide and put one in the chamber you need to have one in the chamber that weapon needs to be ready to fire when it comes out of the holster so my advice to you uh of course it's your choice it depends on your experience levels i've been carrying a gun i've mentioned this before uh, i was a, i'm a retired new jersey state trooper i was a trooper for 25 years and i've been retired for three years now going on three years so i've been carrying a handgun of some type or sort pretty much every day in my life for 28 years i'm very comfortable carrying concealed carrying a weapon you may not be you may be carrying for 28 days or 28 hours or maybe you just got your carry permit today so you may not feel comfortable so my advice to you is do what you feel comfortable with i'm telling you my opinion is you're carrying a weapon to protect yourself your family your loved ones people close to you you're only going to use the weapon as a last resort right we hope that we never have to but this is a last resort to protect ourselves and our families this needs to be ready to fire when it comes out of the holster if you're trying to be stealthy about it, you, there's no way you can rack the slide of a handgun and not be noticed. Someone's going to hear it. Someone's going to see it. So if you're trying to be, you know, lay low until the right moment that you have to engage, you know, racking that slide is absolutely going to give you away. So my advice to you is if you don't feel comfortable, maybe you need to train more. In fact, that's always my advice. Get more training, whether it's a certified firearms instructor doing certain drills, other drills, active shooter drills, different things, dry firing, you know, in, in your in your house, in your backyard, make sure it's unloaded, get some dummy rounds. So get yourself some more training, get comfortable. If you've been around firearms your whole life or you're former military or law enforcement, then you know what I'm talking about. You're probably already comfortable carrying and you know you're used to carrying a weapon with a round in the chamber. You absolutely want to invest in a very good holster. Make sure it's a decent holster and make sure that the holster is made for the weapon and you know it's up to you what level of retention you want that holster. Some people feel better having that level two or level three where you have to actually you know press down a lever, move a, move a hood, up or down or just push a button to get that weapon out and that's fine have a decent holster number one and get some additional training if you haven't had training already so if you've never had somebody for example and i recommend this to everyone if you've never had somebody try to take your weapon and police have this training it's called weapon retention training you know you get with somebody who their sole purpose is to try to get your gun and you're wearing your duty holster and it's you know in new jersey it's a level three for police officers it's easier to protect a weapon when it's in a level three holster because that bad guy he you know he's got to do more than just pull it out he's got to disengage it but obviously you're you're fighting against other recruits or police officers so they know how to get that weapon out they have an advantage so if you've never had that training before i highly recommend that you get it you will find that it will take everything in your power most likely if you're matched up with somebody 
pretty equivalent to yourself, body size and, and strength, it will take everything in your power to keep that weapon on your person. And I'm talking about a duty level three retention holster. If you have, you know, a Kydex holster that is just simply, you know, it's friction and someone can, all they have to do is get a hold of it and pull it out, then obviously that's gonna take more work on your part to keep them from getting your weapon. So all I'm saying, if you've never had that training, it's not a bad idea to get it. And that will boost your confidence confidence I think if you're if your confidence isn't the highest which it needs to be really then you need all the help you can get right you need a confidence builder take a class like that there are classes out there there are certified firearms instructors that will uh, offer classes to you like that and I highly recommend it if you like this video please hit the like button and share it also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you're notified when we release new videos constantly updating these videos these carry issues seem to be changing frequently with the new laws and the lawsuits and the court actions don't forget to watch some of our other videos on these important topics thanks for watching take care and stay safe